video is about my Celtic lever harp build. Since I've never built a harp before, I've purchased plans for a Celtic lever harp from Robinson Harp Shop. These plans give me a starting point for building my own harp. However, the plans are designed to be cut out and used as stencils for cutting wood. Because of this, several critical dimensions were missing. Especially missing, in my opinion, are the angles for the harp. These are very important to know. To overcome this, I used several pictures of harps, actual harps, and measured the angles of numerous other harps. From this information, I made my best guess as to what these angles should be. Now let's define what I mean when I say neck, pillar, sound box, and bass, as shown here in the image. With all the information in, I designed my harp's neck and pillar. I have added a horse to the head of my harp that was not in the original plans. These two components join together to form the structure which supports the strings. Working inside of Blender, I have built a 3D model so that I have some hope of getting all my parts to fit together. It's important to get this just right, or the strings could be too long, too short, or too close, or too far apart. <laughs> We will start by looking at building the sound box. I am making a stave back, half barrel shaped sound box. For this, I need to glue wooden staves together to form the cone shape of the sound box. First, I use some pine staves to make sure I had the right shape. Then, when I have the right shape for the staves, I cut hickory staves. These staves are taped together to keep them from flopping all over the place. To keep the staves in place while the wood cures, I have set them up in a custom cradle. Next I applied epoxy glue and placed them in the cradle. The inner support blocks keep the shape from collapsing when I apply bungee cords to hold it all tightly together. The epoxy was then allowed to cure for two days to make sure it achieved full cure. After it was cured, the sound box could be removed from the cradle. Fiberglass cloth was added to the inside of the box to further reinforce the staves and hold them together. Epoxy was applied to the cloth, and it virtually disappears as it adheres to the inside of the sound box. Once the epoxy cured, the excess cloth can be trimmed. It almost looks like nothing was added. We will cut some access holes into this structure. These allow strings to be tied on later. Now we will add interior support ribs. These ribs also keep the staves from collapsing when tension is applied to them. The sound box is trimmed at the top and bottom to the correct angle that will define how the box slopes backward. By the way, the ribs were shaped to avoid touching the soundboard while it is vibrating. This is important to avoid any buzzing noises. Once everything is glued in place, a large hole is cut in the bottom plate. This allows sound to get out of the bottom. When we attach the base to the sound box, it can virtually stand on its own. Now let's look at building the neck. I made an interior structure out of marine grade plywood and carbon fiber laminated together with epoxy. Once this interior was complete, I wrapped the whole thing in hickory to make it pretty. I need to make sure I have enough hickory wood thickness for the carving to come later. This is overbuilding things but I wanted to make the neck very, very strong. There's over 1,000 pounds of string tension on the neck, so it needs to be very strong. Building the pillar is much the same as for the neck. I built a laminate stack of plywood and carbon fiber and then wrapped this in hickory, like before. 
dry fitting the neck and pillar together just to make sure that the mortise joint is correctly formed. Then dry fitting with the sound box in place helps confirm that everything is going to fit together. Small adjustments can be made if needed. Here's a picture of the harp with me in the photo so you can see the scale of the harp. Another thing to watch out for is how the strings will fit. So I did a test fit for these using fishing line. Building the base. I used both hickory and pine to build the base. The pine will be painted, so I don't need to be fancy. I wanted to use some elven lettering for my base, and to label the harp with its name and maker. Of course, this is very Tolkien-esque. You can find an elven letter translator app online. is perhaps the most fragile part of the harp other than strings. I made my soundboard out of plywood and carbon fiber Kevlar cloth. The string rib is attached to the inside of the board and is made of laminated plywood. I want to put some of my artwork on the soundboard. I am using acrylic paints to paint a nighttime rose garden scene with an elegant Irish girl. I started with some pencil sketches to make sure I got some of the details correct. Then I translated this into paint on the soundboard. I added details progressively while masking off other parts to protect them. Once complete, I added a layer of epoxy to protect the painting. A quick test fit of the soundboard on the harp showed it needed to be trimmed a bit. The plans came with Celtic knotwork I could use to carve into the wood, but I decided I wanted to create my own. Since I have a horse theme going, I decided to focus on horses here and made my own sketches. I made an initial cut into the wood with a Dremel bit to define the rough shape. This shape is then refined by hand with knives and files. I added some stain to darken the background and help the carving jump out. I used the same process for all the carvings on the pillar. The finished pillar is given a coat of epoxy to protect it. Working on the horse head on the neck, I started making coarse cuts with coarse files. I had to add additional wood for the mane. The main carving was refined with knives and files. The mane is on the tuning pin side and not on the string side as it may interfere with the strings. We can drill preliminary holes for the tuning pins and bridge pins. Once complete, we can also coat this with epoxy to protect it. I also carved horse hooves to support the base. I decided on horse hooves because they are easier than the lion's feet the plans call for. And they are more consistent with the harp's theme. These are sealed and added to the base. the major parts are complete, we can begin assembling the harp. The sound box and bass are already assembled mostly. Only a few small modifications here. We need to dry fit all the parts together again and make any last minute adjustments. I also check the fit of the strings again just to confirm all is well. I forgot to mention earlier that wood was added to the pillar for the scroll carved on the front and its pins. A 
everything is coming together well and looking good. We prepare to attach the soundboard by drilling holes for the screws. The soundboard is held on with glue and screws. Then trim has been made to cover the screws. It's all cut to fit and size. And finally, everything is glued and screwed into one unified hole. And ta-da! The harp is assembled and looking great. Additional coats of sealer are now applied. We now need to add the hardware, starting with the tuning pins. I bought all my hardware from Robinson's Harp Shop, including strings, levers, pins, etc. Next I add the bridge pins in place. These determine the vibration length of the strings. With those in place, the strings can be added and preliminarily tuned. Next the levers are added. Levers allow the strings to be switched between flat to natural or natural to sharp. Eventually, I would add a complete set of levers so my harp can be set to most any key. And here is the finished harp. This was an awesome project and it turned out really well. The harp does have a few problems, but for a first time build, I am immensely pleased. I'm better at building this than playing it, but I'm glad I got to learn to play a little bit. It has been a fun and beautiful instrument. Thank you for watching today. See you in our next video.